Welcome to our show, Ask Your Doctor. I'm your host, Shivani Raj. For today's show, we have Glendale Heights dentist, Dr. Bhumika Patel. She completed a Bachelor of Science degree in Biology at North Central College. She graduated summa cum laude and was awarded a certificate for highest distinction in biology for the class of 2006. During her undergraduation education, Dr. Patel also served as president of the pre-health organization. Her dental office uses the most modern techniques in dentistry today. Digital x-rays, intraoral cameras and computing dental practice management software allows their offices to be paperless. They also use the latest in dental materials to ensure their patients are getting the most out of their dental care. So without any further delay, let's welcome doctor. Hi doctor, welcome to our show. How are you doing? Good, thank you for inviting me for the show. Thank you so much for coming again, doctor. First of all, doctor, can you please introduce a little about yourself and what do you do? Absolutely. So my name is Dr. Bhumika Patel. I'm a general dentist as well as a cosmetic and an implant dentist. Um, I'm also the CCO of a company called Zenobi. Uh, I was actually born in India. I moved here in 1993 in Illinois, and I've been in Illinois since then. Um, yes. I went to University of Illinois College of Dentistry and graduated in 2010. And after that, I worked for a few years at a company, after which my husband and some wonderful friends encouraged me to open my own practice. So I took on a startup project and uh, opened my first baby called Glendale Heights Family Dental in 2014. And it's the same year I also had my first human child as well. And then I continued on in 2019 to co-found another startup with my husband, Swarup Patel, and Dr. Karthik Balakrishnan, a company called Zenobi, where we made a product called Air to Z, which makes your existing dental sensors wireless. So it's also used in my practice as well. Yes. Um, so th that's a little bit about me um, and what I do so far. <laughs> and I'm yes. continuing to learn constantly. Yes. Uh, so, doctor, how did you grow your interest in dentistry? Um, because, uh, uh, you know, you do so much, you know, you also started a startup. So can I know from where did you could get this interest? Absolutely. Um, so the funny thing is, I was in medical school track since day one. I was interested in medical. I know that's a common Indian cliche, whether you want to go into medical or you want to go into engineering. But I was truly interested in the entire medical field. Um, and I was in India at that time. I didn't even know what dentistry field was until I moved to U.S. And my cousin told me I have to come in for my cleanings every six months. And my parents and everyone is like, what cleaning? What is this? Right. So in India and everywhere, people don't even know what dental field is. So my curiosity began since then um, about dentistry and teeth. So I used to ask my cousin a lot of questions. I mean, a lot of questions. Um, I'm so happy that she answered all my questions. Um, I went on to do a surgical assistant course. Um, sorry, not a surgical assistant course. I was a surgical assistant working for an oral surgeon's office. So I learned that there's a surgical aspect to dentistry as well. Okay. And this is where my interest grew. So I, I switched from medical track to dental. I went ahead and took the DATs. I applied to dental school and I was accepted luckily to my first choice, which was UIC College of Dentistry. And um, I've been growing since then. Even after I graduated, I continue to do so many courses. I do 30 plus hours of CEs uh, just to learn further in dentistry, whether it's in technology or different procedures, just to keep up with the new technology out there. And so I can incorporate that into my office as well to provide the comfort that my patient require. Yes. Uh, so doctor, uh, when I was, you know, searching a little about you, um, there was something called this cosmetic denture that uh, you work with. So can you tell us what exactly they are? Yes. So a lot of people, when they lose their teeth, they don't realize that you need to replace it with something. So when you lose your teeth, what happens is all your facial muscles start sagging. And a lot of people think it's only for cosmetic reasons that you wear your dentures, but that's not true. It's also so you could speak properly without having the proper facial structure. It's hard to say certain words. It's hard to communicate. It's hard to eat properly. 
So dentures are necessary for that. Now there's a couple different kinds. So there's the traditional denture where you put it in your mouth and you take it out at nighttime. It's great. It serves a lot of patients. You could eat with it. You could talk with it. Um, the only concern with that is it starts getting loose over time. Um, and this is why a lot of patients stop wearing it because they're like, well, I can't talk. It falls out of my mouth. What do I do? So there's a better procedure out there as well. It's called implant over denture or all on four procedure. So I actually have a model where I can show you. So something called implant over denture. So what happens is there's these couple implants that are placed in inside your jaw and then it acts like a button on your shirt. You have the opposite part in your other part of the denture and you snap it in place. So now it's not gonna come out. You see how hard it is for me to come yes. out. Um, so people can eat great with this. Still, if someone wants a removable option, you could take it out at night and wash it um, even after every time you eat. And one of the best procedures out there that a lot of patients are liking nowadays it's called all on four. So we put a minimum of four implants into your mouth. You see this person is missing all their teeth. You put minimum of four implants and this denture or a bridge gets screwed into this implant and it does not come out. The only person that can take this out is a highly trained all on X specialist and you do need to have it taken out every so often to get it cleaned and make sure the screws and everything is working well. Yeah. So we do a lot of these procedures in my office and a lot of people are happy with it. Their confidence is back. They're able to talk normal. They don't lose their dentures. Um, I was fortunate enough that my uncle and my father asked me to do this procedure on them. Um, it took a while for me to convince my dad, my own dad to go through with this procedure. And after he, I walked him through the entire process and he learned about the procedure and he went through it, he tells me, I wish I did this earlier because he was in traditional dentures before. And then after this, he doesn't have to worry about losing his denture anymore because everywhere he used to put it and he used to ask everyone, has anyone seen my denture? So now he doesn't have to worry about that. Yes, people, I think every other person uh, goes through it. Even I got my teeth uh, straightened. It was a huge process. So can you tell us what are some ways um, a person can, you know, get their street in? Yes. So teeth straightening is very okay. common and now for kids as well as adults. Um, let's first talk about why do we need to straighten our teeth? So I get a lot of questions, especially from adults that, hey, I'm happy with my smile. My smile doesn't bother me. The crooked teeth don't bother me. Why do I need to straighten them? Do you know how expensive it is? So these are the questions I get. Um, it's not, you know, it's great. You get your pearly, straight, white teeth and you have a beautiful smile, but that's not the only purpose of straightening your teeth. There's actually health and dental advantage to it as well. So when you, when you have um, crooked teeth or if you have gaps in your teeth or overlapping teeth, um, what happens is you tend to get a lot of food that builds up in your mouth, which is a cycle. So once the food builds up and you don't tend to clean it out right away, you get more plaque in your mouth, which is more bacteria. Then it leads to something called gum disease, a gingivitis or periodontitis. And that, you know, affects your bones. You start losing your bone, which affects your teeth because then you start losing your teeth. It's the bone that houses your teeth in your mouth, correct? So if you start losing your teeth, then you're looking at other um, procedures like cavity filling, the dentures or implants, and the bacteria still continues in your mouth. And a lot of people, what they don't realize is the mouth is the gateway to everything, your entire body. So a lot of the bacteria and diseases start in the mouth. So this bacteria that builds up in your mouth travels down your bloodstream and then it affects your diabetes, it helps, it affects your high blood pressure, your heart disease, every single thing is linked. So this is why if you can prevent all of that, why not straighten your teeth, right? 
So, and the nice side effect to it is you get a beautiful smile, right? Yeah. Um, so now we talked about why it's necessary, but what are some ways of straightening, correct? So the traditional way is a bracket and wire system, which gets bonded on your tooth. So that doesn't come out of your mouth. Only person that can get it out is your orthodontist or your dentist that's treating you. Um, the second way of doing this is something called Invisalign or clear retainer system. Uh, there's multiple out there. And you go through multiple retainers. You put it in your mouth and it helps to straighten your teeth. With clear retainers, you can take it out of your mouth as well. A third way of doing it is um, if the braces don't work or someone absolutely doesn't want braces, is to go through a full mouth rehab with crowns and veneers to straighten your mouth as well. Uh, so doctor, nowadays, you know, you're opening your Instagram or you're opening Google. Everybody's crazy about Invisalign. They're talking about how easy it is and how, you know, they don't have to go traditionally with braces when I had, which was pretty embarrassing for quite <laughs> some time. But, you know, I never really had an option of Invisalign. But otherwise, I would have chosen it. But this is a constant question I have in my head. Is, is, is Invisalign that effective? Because, you know, even when I had my retainers, I was not supposed to remove it un unless and until I was eating something so right. invisalign is something that you take off you put it again will will the is the process not too long and also a little expensive according to you no actually um so the invisalign is something i do in my office and um it's very well received by patients because when you eat you could take it off you can also do a great job brushing and cleaning whereas with the brackets it's harder to keep it clean can you keep it clean absolutely but it, it requires more time to do it. It's it's really not that expensive. It's the same price as the braces system. Um, and it depends case by case. If some people have a very complicated case, then it may be a little bit more expensive. But the pricing is generally not the same for every single person because it's based on how complicated your teeth are. I actually did Invisalign as an adult on myself uh, just to see how it feels. And I have one tooth that always bothers me. And I loved it, to be honest with you. Um, when I was younger, I didn't need braces, but I still tried the bracket and metal wire system just so I could, you know, relate to patients and know what it feels like to have that, right? Um, but I would think that Invisalign is better. So, Doctor, you yourself uh, have been in this industry for quite some long. Um, so, what are some issues that people uh, post-60 uh, deal with and how do you deal with when uh, patients like that come to you? Yeah, so people age 60 and above, I've noticed hardly come to the dentist, whether they're afraid or it's financial reasons or they don't understand the importance. So when I see them, I notice that they have a lot of gum disease or they'll have a lot of cavities present. Um, most of them are missing one tooth or more. So I'm having to explain to them what is deep cleaning, why is necessary, because they've never been explained to them you know, what is the importance of replacing all those missing teeth? Because a lot of them say, well, I've been chewing just fine without teeth. So why, why do I need teeth here? You know, it's been like this for 10 somewhat years. And who are you to tell me you need teeth? You, you know, you need teeth now. So I have to sit there. I have to educate with them. I explain their concerns and I say, and I, I take pictures. I take pictures of their mouth and I show in reality what is happening. I show them where their cavity is. I show them all the bacteria. I show them where their gums are irritated or why they're bleeding. And then they start learning and getting convinced that, hey, they need some of these treatments. And I have quite a few older patients and they tell me that, hey, no one has taken the time out to sit there and explain all this to us. And they go through the treatment and they maintain their six month cleanings after that. And they feel healthier. Because like I said earlier, and that's the same bacteria that starts affecting the rest of your body from diabetes and um, other health concerns as well. So yes. you see the importance of it afterwards. Yes. But the first step is education. Yes, correct. Exactly. Uh, so doctor, uh, now that, you know, we've come to education part, um, you know, once there was a trend 
where people started putting baking soda and lime on their teeth just to uh, you know uh, do uh, their teeth whitened so teeth whitening has become a popular you know uh, let's call it a trend on instagram uh, that everybody wants a perfect white pearly teeth so um, what exactly to you uh, you know to you is how exactly how is it dangerous because what happens is a lot of people are just randomly using anything that pops up in the pharmacy and it's not actually very nice uh so can you tell us um in what natural ways can one whiten their teeth and uh you know just give your views on that there are teeth whitening is great you know it's used to sometimes remove staining or other things going on in your mouth in addition to help it brighten your teeth as well right um there's several type of whitening out there there's in office whitening where you come in and you sit probably for an hour and in one appointment, your teeth are brighter, whiter, and um, if there's staining or other concern, it gets dealt with. Um, this way, your dentist is controlling the percentage of what is being used and sa safely. They're using other substances to help minimize the sensitivity as well. Uh, second option is something you can do at home, but a custom tray is made just for you, and a certain solution is given to you. So then you're again, using it safely at your house. And it may take a few weeks for, for you to see the results. Uh, third way is, like you said, a lot of over-the-counter products that are out there. But not all of them are same. Some of them are safer, but you need to talk to your dentist and figure out which one is safer, what is all going to require, how is your mouth health to help you with that, you know? So I have patients some of them are naturally more sensitive than other patients. Their teeth are more sensitive for one reason or another. I sit there and I decide which way is the safer way for that patient where they're not going to feel so much sensitivity or pain, correct? One of the major things that patients do feel from overusing the whitening or incorrectly using the whitening stuff is sensitivity in your mouth. And that sensitivity it's, it's such a small word compared to what you feel. I've seen it in patients. I've experienced the pain with them. You know, I've, I've seen them go through it. They can't, they can't sleep. They can't eat. They can't drink anything. It is not fun. So don't do it. Don't try all these different remedies that may or may not work. Baking soda is not a great way to whiten your teeth. What it does, it takes away the protective layer of your tooth called enamel. And guess what? you can't get that enamel back. And enamel is like a barrier. It's a protection for your tooth. And when you take that away, you're increasing your risk of not just sensitivity, but you're increasing your risk of getting cavities. You're increasing your risk of making your teeth brittle and then it breaks. Um, a lot of people start clenching and grinding their teeth from it. So there's way too much that could go wrong. Um, and so it's really not worth it. Some things are worth looking great at, but do it the right way, right? If you start using all at home remedies because it's cheaper, baking soda costs a couple dollars, right? But what about all the effects it does? Then you're looking at tens of thousands of dollars on fixing that mistake, right? That two dollars just costs you about ten thousand plus dollars to try to fix that. And it's and the pain is an addition um, that you can't even calculate the cost of. Yes. Uh, so doctors, uh, what exactly is a porcelain uh, veneers? Uh, can you explain a little, bit, a little about what are veneers and who can consider taking them? Yes. So veneers, I love veneers. They, um, they're they custom made for each person's tooth. You can change the size of the tooth, the shape of the tooth, and it's minimally invasive. Meaning, you know, what it is, I'm going to show you a model of what a veneer could be. Here, I have one tooth. And it looks like a natural tooth, right? If I take it off, this right here is a veneer. It's just a facing of the tooth. So you, you take away very little bit of the tooth, and then you cement it on top, and it stays permanently on there. You have to generally cut it off. Now, veneer is used for many reasons. Um, I mentioned earlier when you want to straighten your teeth, um, sometimes we do that on all your teeth, to, you know, it's called a full mouth rehab procedure. It changes your entire smile. A lot of celebrities go through it as well. Um, if your teeth are smaller or you were born with um, a peg lateral or, or, or a naturally small stained tooth, 
a veneer is a great way to change that as well. So I've done as little as two veneers where, you know, a person has cracked one tooth or two teeth just to give it symmetry. I don't really recommend doing one veneer. I have done one. It could turn out great, but it's not as good as doing, you know, two at a time. And I've done a full mouth veneer uh, where it changes their entire smile and their confidence. I mean, I've had patients that come to me and talk to me like this when they first come in and they're afraid to show me their mouth. And I'm telling them, well, I can't do anything with unless you show me first what's going on, right? But th this is how used to, they've gotten talking with everyone, just talking like this. Um, and then after they left, they're smiling so big, you know, wide, and they're ready to show that smile off to the entire world. Yeah. So it really does change a person's confidence. Um, you know, I've had patients that would not get certain jobs because they had to speak for a living and their teeth did not look good. Um, now doing the veneers, they get out there and they're able to find a job. I had another patient who opened up a dance studio where they have to smile, right, while dancing. And it it greatly, you know, changed their life. And they even got selected for a competition with their partner for ballroom dancing. So I was super excited for them. Yeah. Um, but veneers can do a lot. It's amazing. Yes, I think I can completely relate to the patients who come with their mouth closed and, you know, they're pretty shy because that happened to me also. I used to have a teeth gap and I was super, uh, you know, uh, insecure about it. But I think braces actually changed my life. I come on TV now, who expected? Uh, so, <laughs> yes, I think people should consider them. So with this, can you tell, uh, 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 you know, uh, the viewers watching the show about some uh, healthy dental habits? Because there were so many habits that I didn't know once I got to a dentist I got to know so well, what are some basic uh, dental habits doctor that you want to say to the viewers yeah so you know you come to the dentist twice a year that's number one habit you need to go to your dentist but again you're only going twice a year to get your teeth cleaned or your work done right so you need to do your at-home routine as well it's important to brush twice a day for two minutes and floss. A lot of people forget the flossing because it takes time and no one wants to do it. But this is where a lot of the gingivitis starts. And you can avoid that if you just floss. Um, so there's a technique to brushing, which, you know, I didn't even know until I got to dental school. No one educated me on this. And I always educate my patients on this now. So a lot of us tend to brush in this really harsh way. You think the harder you brush, it's better for you. It's actually worse for you. Um, you want to get a soft bristle toothbrush. And the way you brush is you hold your toothbrush at a 45 degree angle to your gum. So you see how you're able to get underneath your gums. The bristles are able to get underneath your gums to clean. And you want to go gently back and forth like this when you brush. But what a lot of people do is and all you're doing is actually hurting your gums and you're not, you know, you're not really doing yourself any favors. So what I do is if you don't have an electric toothbrush, which I love electric toothbrush, if you don't have it, I really recommend it, um, which tells you the amount of time you're brushing for. Um, a manual toothbrush is great too. But then what I do with manual is you count one to 20, one, two, three, four, five, six, and so on and then move on to the next few teeth and go around. The only place it's different, which a lot of people miss, miss is on your bottom front teeth. On the tongue side, you don't wanna brush the exact same way. You wanna actually brush up and down. That's the only way to cover the whole tooth. And same on the top as well. Um, so this is a very important technique. And if you're not doing this technique, I would advise you to start right now because you'll be amazed to see how much less plaque buildup you have. When you go to your dentist, they'll be surprised too. And they're going to ask you, what have you been doing separate? You know, what have you been doing separately or differently? Tell them you saw, you saw the show. <laughs> <laughs> yes, great. Great answer, uh, doctor. Uh, finally, doctor, can you say uh, dental care habits for babies too? Because, uh, you know, uh, people tend to forget that, you know, when babies are growing their teeth, it's also very important for them. Uh, of course, the babies can't do anything for themselves. Anything that you want to say to the new parents watching the show? 
Yes. So baby is a huge topic, actually. Um, so the first time you should bring your child in to the dentist is when your first tooth comes out. Okay. Um, I get a lot of times patients coming in after two years or five years. It's already very late. Now, before the first tooth comes out, what do you do? Because you're not seeing the dentist. Again, you need to build good habits because this baby is still eating, right? They're eating that milk. So as a new parent, you need to take a washcloth, wet it, and wa wash off their gums after they eat. It not only washes off their gum, they actually get a good massage out of it, and it makes them feel good. So that is crucial. It's crucial to start those good habits earlier. After you uh, do that, then eventually your teeth will come out. Again, you're going to use a toothbrush without a fluoridated toothpaste. Because they're too young, they don't know how to spit the toothpaste out yet. There's many natural toothpaste out there like Tom's and other, I, you know, I don't want to name so many because there's so many out there. And you can use it to brush their teeth and teach them how to spit it out. But at this point, if they swallow it because it tastes delicious, it's okay. Um, you're, you're, again, building that habit. And then once you start coming into the dentist, they will also teach you how, the, how to brush their teeth, how to spit out the toothpaste, and what the importance is. Then um, at age two or three, I would say, you can safely switch over to the fluoridated toothpaste, but make sure that they're spitting it out because you, want, you don't want that much fluoride in the body either. Fluoride is good for the kids. It's good for adults. It prevents you from getting cavities, but you don't want to get excessive amount either. So a lot of parents ask me, well, they're so young, you know, when they're six months or one year, when uh, their first tooth comes out, you know, what are you going to do? What is so special about you looking at one to two teeth? There's nothing special about it. It's about getting them acclimated to coming to the dental office. Because when they're young, they go to so many medical office, they associate a doctor with needles, unfortunately. So when I get older kids coming in, they're screaming, they're jumping, they won't sit in the chair until we talk to them and they realize like, hey, this appointment is actually fun at a dentist. They're just brushing my teeth. I get some gifts, I get goodie bags, and I get a toothbrush. So eventually they, they become used to it that, hey, this is the fun doctor. We need to do this. And if a procedure arises that they need to do, that's okay. They're learning all the different noises in the dental office as well. What I would like to warn parents about is something called baby bottle caries. It is too common. It's easy. I get it. As moms, we're tired. We're exhausted. You just want to have a little break sometimes. So a lot of moms or dads will let the baby go to sleep with a bottle in the mouth just so they would go to sleep and we can go to sleep. But please, please, please don't do that. Because what happens is that bacteria stays in their mouth. And I've seen too many kids with almost all their teeth needing to come out at a very young age. And it's not fun for them. And they have to be IV sedated. And the procedures that go along with it is not fun as a parent. And it's definitely not fun as a child. Um, and then they're traumatized because of it. So take that extra effort you know, try to get them to forget their bottles. Don't let them sleep with the bottle at night. Yes. Thank you, doctor, for tuning on to a show. We did cover so many different topics and I really had a lot of fun having you on, a, on my show.